In this video, we're gonna host a static website on AWS S3, connect the site to a custom domain, and set up HTTPS using CloudFront. So you don't have to be one of those people living with the shame of owning a non-secure website. How dare you? But before we get into all that, let's just clear up what a static website actually is. I'm gonna use AWS's documentation for the definition, otherwise we could be here all day. A static website consists of individual web pages that include static content. They can also include client-side scripts. Dynamic websites rely on server-side processing, including server-side scripts. And then we have some examples. I'm gonna be using Create React App today as it produces a production-ready static application straight out of the box. But any static site will do. Okay, so let's get started then. The first thing we're gonna do is generate our static website and we're gonna be using Create React App for that. So I've opened a folder in VS Code and the first command we're gonna run is npx create React App. And then what we wanna call the static site. So I'll just call it uh, static site S3. Very original, I know and we'll just wait for that to complete. Okay, now that that's finished, you should be able to see something like this, a boilerplate create React app. To get an idea what it, the site actually looks like, let's spin up the development server with npm start. Okay, so once the development server's up and running, you should see this. Um, this is the site we're gonna be hosting today. So let's go back into Visual Studio Code and the next thing we're going to need to do is like it mentions here is we're going to need to do a production build command for that is npm run build okay so now the build is complete you can see we've got a build folder and that contains all of our assets that we're going to upload to s3 so let's crack on with that okay so i'm going to assume you've got an aws account set up um, so the first thing we need to do is go to the aws console and we're gonna go to S3. Okay, so once we're in S3, we're gonna go to the bucket section and we're gonna create two buckets. The first bucket we're gonna create is the full name of our domain name. So for me, I'm gonna be using a custom domain name called uh, www.jonathandavis.live and obviously you'd replace jonathandavis.live with your custom domain name. And this is a domain I bought as an example for another video that I'll link below. So I'm just reusing it for this video. We're gonna keep all of the default settings as they are and create that bucket. And once that's created, we're gonna create another bucket and that's just gonna be jonathandavis.live without the www. We're gonna keep that all default as well and create the bucket. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to the full domain name and we're gonna upload the contents of the build folder that we created for our React app. So if we go to upload, so this is a little bit squished, but I just wanted to show you exactly what we're getting. So we wanna get everything that's contained within the build folder. We'll just drag that across. Make that larger again so you can see. And we're gonna click upload and we can see that we've got the contents of the build folder. Now what we're gonna to need to do is amend some of the permissions for the bucket. Now by default, all S3 buckets block public access, which is probably a good thing to be honest. Uh, so we're just gonna to need to enable that. The reason for this being is we're gonna serve these files as a web page. So when a user requests the web page, we're gonna send these files and they'll be rendered in the browser. So if we turn that off and we confirm this, The next thing we're gonna to need to do is edit the bucket policy. So in true Blue Peter fashion, here's one I've created earlier. So if I just copy and paste this one in, I'll leave a, a link to this in the description um, so you can just replace what you need in here. This is basically saying that on our S3 bucket, we want to allow everyone, so this wildcard for the principal, to be able to get objects from the bucket www.jonathandavis.live and then with the key is specified as a wildcard. So everything in the bucket, we want people to be able to retrieve. When you're pasting this in, all you need to do is replace your domain with mine. Okay, so let's save that. 
Okay, so now we're gonna change some of the bucket properties. If you scroll all the way down, you'll see that we've got static website hosting, which is currently disabled by default. And we obviously want this enabled. We're gonna leave it on host a static website. And we do have an index.html file in our build folder. And that is everything we need for here. So let's just save the changes. Okay, so once that's done, we're gonna go back to the jonathandavis.live, so without the www. And we're not gonna upload anything to this bucket. What we're gonna do for this bucket is change some of the properties. Scroll all the way down like we just did. Okay, so we're gonna enable static website hosting too, but there's a slight difference. Uh, we're gonna redirect requests for an object. This is the reason why we're not gonna be uploading anything to this bucket is we're gonna redirect the requests that come in to the, the full domain bucket. Um, and we're gonna put the full domain name here, www.jonathandavis.live, and we're gonna put the protocol as HTTP for now. So let's save that. Okay, so if we go back to the full domain bucket and we look in its properties, we can now see that there is a bucket website endpoint, uh, which is made up of the domain name and S3 website, the region, amazonaws.com. So if we copy that, so going to the endpoint, you can see we've got our static React app. So already we're hosting a static site on S3. So as you can see, the URL we're using to access it isn't the prettiest, not very snappy or professional. So let's see how to connect it to a custom domain. Okay, so the first step for connecting a custom domain to our static site is going to route 53. And just before we go into the hosted zone, we'll go into registered domains. And you can see I've got jonathandavis.live as a registered domain. Um, so we'll go to the hosted zone that was created when the domain was registered. So let's have a look at the hosted zone. As you can see, we've got the two default records that you get when you register a domain. Uh, what we're gonna need to do is create two more. And what these will do is route the traffic from the domain to the S3 buckets. So if we go to create record, I find it handy to switch to the wizard as we just want simple routing. Okay, so we're just gonna define a simple record. And what we're gonna have is www, and this will be the full domain name and record type will remain as it is. And for values, we're gonna scroll down to alias to S3 website endpoint. And we're gonna choose the region, which was EU West one for me. And I'm gonna point it to the bucket with the same name. Let's define that simple record. There we go. And we're gonna create another one here, and this will be for the bucket without www at the front. And it's gonna be the same thing. An alias to S3 website endpoint, and the same region. Point it at the jonathandavis.live bucket. And then we're ready to create those records. So as you can see now, we've got four records, the two defaults that we got, and then the two type A that we just created. Okay, so let's try and access the domain that we just configured. If we go to jonathandavis.live, we can see that we've got the static site that we uploaded to S3, so it's all working. If this isn't working straight away for you, give it a few minutes because it can take a little while to sync up. So you can see that both www.jonathandavis.live and, and jonathandavis.live both resolve to the static site that we set up because we set up the redirect from the, uh, from the other bucket. The only problem we have now is this big, ugly, not secure, which again, if you don't have anything sensitive on your site or you're not bothered, then you can leave it as this. Um, but I think it is nice to enable HTTPS on your site as it looks a lot better. And also if someone's behind a corporate network, it can give them trouble. So I think it's a worthwhile thing to do because it doesn't really take that much effort as you're about to see. 
Okay, so the first thing we need to do to enable HTTPS on our site is to get a certificate. So what we're gonna do is go to Certificate Manager. Okay, so once we're here, a really important point is we need to change to US East 1, North Virginia. Don't forget to do this because your certificate will not work in any other region with CloudFront. Um, then we're gonna go to request certificate and we're gonna be requesting a public certificate. So we're gonna put the full domain name www.jonathandavis.live and then we're gonna add another name without the www. I'm sure you know this by now. We're gonna pick a validation method of DNS validation. So this is basically just checking that we own the domain and it's easier than email validation. And we can request the certificate. Okay, so as you can see, our certificate is pending validation. Let's actually see what that means. So we click on the certificate ID. So as you can see, we've got two domain records that we need to validate, uh, the full domain and obviously without the www. Um, as we're in AWS, we can just click on create records in route 53 and it will create these records and validate the we own the domain. Um, if you're using GoDaddy or anything like that, you can manually create these records and validate DNS like that. So it's nothing special to AWS. However, it is very convenient that we can just click on the create records button. So let's go back to route 53 and see what's actually been done. So as you can see, the hosted zone for Jonathan Davis Live now contains six records. The two C name records that require the validation for the certificate. And as you can see, if we go back to the certificate manager, we've now got a status of issued and success against the validation of the domains. So that's great. Okay, so now we're gonna go to CloudFront. Okay, so if you've never used CloudFront before, it's basically a CDN that sits in front of your applications. Um, we're gonna use it to uh, enable HTTPS for our site. So. Let's create a CloudFront distribution. Okay, so we're gonna create our first distribution and we're gonna do the full domain first. For origin domain, we're gonna to need to go back to S3 and we are gonna to need to copy the endpoint for our static website hosting. And that is gonna be the value of origin domain. So for the viewer protocol policy, anyone coming in via HTTP, we want to redirect to HTTPS. So click on that. So the next thing we need to do in the settings section is add an alternate domain name. And this is where we put in our custom domain. The full domain for this one. And we will choose this certificate that we just created. And that is everything we need for that distribution. Okay, so we're gonna create another distribution and that's for the domain without the www. Uh, so we'll same again, we're gonna take the endpoint for static website hosting and we're gonna treat that as the origin domain. Same again, we wanna redirect HTTP. We're gonna add an alternate domain name of jonathandavis.live and we're gonna to point to the certificate and we're gonna create that distribution. Okay, so the CloudFront distributions should take a short while to finish deploying. Okay, so once the CloudFront distributions have finished deploying, we've got a couple of things left to do. First one being going to the Jonathan Davis Live bucket the non-full domain. And we need to edit some of the properties in the static website hosting section. And that is changing the protocol from HTTP to HTTPS. So let's save that. Now, if we go back to CloudFront, we can see that we've got the two distributions and we've got the domain name for the CloudFront distribution. So if we take this CloudFront domain name and we visit that, 
we can see that we've got our static site from S3. And you can now see that it's secure with HTTPS. Essentially what's happening here is the CloudFront distribution is pointing directly at the S3 bucket, hosting our static website. What we need to do now is update our custom domain to make sure that we're including CloudFront in the chain of events. What we need to do now is update our domain records to ensure that we're going to CloudFront before we're going on to the S3 bucket. Okay, so to update the domain records, we're gonna go back to Route 53. So now we're back in the hosted zone of our custom domain. And what we need to do now is update the type A records to point at CloudFront before we go on to S3. So let's edit these records. So instead of routing our traffic to an S3 website endpoint, we now want to route it to a CloudFront distribution. And you can see it's given the distribution that we want. So let's save that. And let's edit the full domain record. Same thing again. It's now an alias to a CloudFront distribution and it's given us the second distribution as well. Okay, so now that's updated. Let's see if our site has finally got HTTPS. As you can see, our connection is secure, our certificate is valid, and it was issued by Amazon. Okay, so there we go. We've now routed our custom domain name to CloudFront and then onto S3. So, job done. So there we have it, a static website hosted on S3, connected to a domain and secured with HTTPS. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe and comment down below if you've got any questions or what you'd like to see me cover next. Cheers.